what, what they record this on a fucking potato? Humans have the ability to party up with players from other factions. This isn't a unique ability. Plenty of builds can execute powerful team combos that benefit both players. But humans have by far the most options when it comes to choosing which support class they want to enlist Good, in their take party. The rest off I've already the made a video discussing looks. the two most Jesus popular Christ. choices, cats and dogs, but I think it's worth giving the more niche support classes a video of their own. I'm going to split them into three categories. Mounts, Battle Summons, and Companions. Mounts are characters that players can combine with to form a more powerful battle unit. The most popular example of this is the horse, and for good reason. Horses have high base power and mobility, and also have high enough stamina regeneration to be useful for fast traveling. In combat, horses can deal high burst damage using their kick move, which is powerful enough to one-shot midweight players. Now, one thing about mounts is that in order for them to work, they have to have spec into the social abilities, but they also need an intelligence level that's a good deal lower than the human player in order for them to gain full control. Horses happen to fit this criteria perfectly. Humans have tried allying themselves with other similar builds with a lot less Well, success. that's because his nuts are tied. Anyway, it's important to know that why horses he's are the off, perfect so. Their most obvious flaw is their extremely low HP. Most animals can recover from slight injuries, but horses will actually get a game over if one of their legs gets broken. Uh, so if low mount HP look like a your fucking thing, wet I would noodle. actually recommend the elephant instead. Elephants are the tankiest land build in the entire game even being able to shrug off hits from a charging rhinoceros. Of course, opting for the elephant is a huge sacrifice in terms of mobility. Not only are they much slower, but elephants also don't have access to the move jump, meaning they get hard countered by any obstacles. These mounts are by far the most powerful, but if you need to fast travel in a server that has a special environmental damage effect, like let's say the Arctic or the desert, you'll need a mount that can resist those effects. For the desert, your best option is the camel. Camels have heat resistance, don't incur the blindness debuff from sandstorms, and can store reserve stamina using their hump ability. They also have one more bonus ability related to their upkeep cost. Now, as the human player, it's your job to make sure that the support player isn't wasting their time Why is that kid so normal about a turn? So you have to provide okay. that XP, and different builds require different forms. Horses are pretty simple. They can feed on grass or grain basically anywhere, and so they have a relatively low upkeep cost. Elephants, on the other hand, require massive amounts of food to maintain. So they're really impractical doubles partners, as they'll either need to spend most of their time foraging, or require you to split most of your best loot with them. Getting back to camels, they have the same relative ease of upkeep that horses do, but with the added benefit of being highly resistant to the defense mechanisms of cacti. Cacti are worth a ton of XP if you can get past their powerful defense mechanisms. Camels can straight up ignore the damage from cacti, so this is a huge advantage if you're trying to traverse desert servers, hey, where cacti may be the only loot available. Camels are also no slouch when it comes to combat, being more than capable of fending off attacks from midway characters like dogs and rams, camel's due mouth both to their height advantage they almost and their up. surprisingly powerful bite attack. All three yeah, of these builds make awesome good. additions to your party, greatly they like three the survivability teeth, don't they? and defensive capability of your group. But sometimes it's not survivability that's the problem. Sometimes human mains need another player to cover their bad matchups, which, as covered in my video Are Humans OP, tend to be the builds that are small and evasive, difficult to hit even with projectiles, and able to not only outspeed them but also outmaneuver them by burrowing or perching in trees. This is where they can really benefit from the second category of support class, what I call Battle Summons. Battle Summons are players that humans can party up with in order to deal damage on targets they'd normally struggle to do so against. This type of support is typically only useful on offense, so if you're trying to defend an objective, like say a field containing loot that you're growing, you might want to opt for a different comp. Perhaps the best example of this is the raptor. Since humans don't have the ability flying or reach, it's essential that they party up with a raptor to best deal with other flyers. Of course, because birds have hollow bones, it'd be pretty irresponsible for a human to command their bird teammate to attack any large target that could counterattack with blunt force. But then again, humans generally don't need help in that matchup. Perhaps one of the most effective team combos in the game consists of the human, the dog, and the raptor. The dog can use their high-level smell ability like to call find a players that are using stealth. And then what? when they try to flee, the raptor can use their high damage and high accuracy pounce strike to score the finishing blow. One thing birds that is can't so do, cool. though, is reach players that are hiding underground. And this Honey, is I'm going hunting and I'm bringing the dog and the in. fucking... the hawk. The ferret matchup against burrowing builds like rabbits, rodents, and snakes is hugely favored, and humans can use this to their advantage since they, like birds, don't have any immediate counterplay options when their opponents burrow where they can't reach. This tech was first pioneered by human mains on the Egyptian server during the Bronze Age. 
Okay, so the last type of support is what I'll call the companion type. And this is where the definition of support begins to kind of fall apart because humans can party up with basically anyone else and at least get a slight morale boost. There are plenty of builds that make great companions, but there are a few that I'd recommend avoiding. I'm gonna break these down into two categories. The first is builds which humans can't effectively support. And the second is builds which curse their party members with a charisma debuff. For the first group, uh, I want to highlight two builds. Excuse me. The first is the Octopus. Many players assume that due to their high intelligence stat, Octopi would make great party members. But the main thing to remember is that in a companionship, the human player is also the moral support role for their non-human counterpart. The higher the intelligence level of your support player, the more attention they require. And as discussed in other videos, cephalopods are among is the top Is a dog smarter than a... Game. The issue octopus? here is that because octopi and humans can't really cross over into each other's Think natural so. servers, there aren't many good options is for it? either of them to support the other. And as a result, octopus players often try to terminate the relationship my dog. and escape the base that humans provide for them. But unfortunately, this also ends up terminating their current playthrough since they lack the lungs ability. The next build on our list also has the same issue of having too high of an intelligence stat for its own good. Parrots don't have the same issue of being unable to cross over into the human server but they have an even higher intelligence stat than Octopi. And since they're a highly social build, they require even more attention and support than Octopi, actually being comparable to a low-level human player. While they do have a pretty high morale boost potential, <coughs> nearly on the same level as cats, they require so much attention that humans can't effectively function as their teammates unless their skill tree has allowed them to work from home. Admittedly, this build does have an above-average presence in the high scores, but I chalk that up to popularity bias. Okay, now for the second category. It's an unfortunate fact of reality that the stat bonuses that a teammate gives you aren't always desirable. And there are many which actually incur negative stat changes, especially to charisma. Human players who party up with arthropods and certain reptiles often experience this, mostly because arthropods and snakes have a high intimidation level that runs completely contrary to any charisma skills that the human player attempts to use. While this can work really well for deterring other players in most biomes, in the city biome where most human mains play, pretty much every important quest and achievement will be harder if you have low charisma and high intimidation. So in my opinion, the downsides greatly outweigh the potential upsides. I know I didn't cover every potential support class, so if you have experience with one of the ones that I left out, video. I 